everyone, regular viewers of these construction on-site vlogs will know that the topics could not always be called glamorous. And often I'm sporting a hard hat and high vis rather than a red carpet worthy gown. Today, we're a step closer to changing that with a foray into the world of film studio developments. I'm very lucky to be joined by Samantha Parar here of the British Film Commission. Hi, Samantha, and thank you for joining me today. Hi, Marianne, thank you very much for having me. So, first of all, some background about why the construction and real estate industry is so excited about film studio developments. In a nutshell, studios and content producers such as Amazon, Netflix or Disney used to claim only to be interested in producing content, not real estate. This thinking has switched and now they're very much interested in directly acquiring or letting space on a long term basis to develop studio complexes, some of which cover many hectares, including sound stages, car parks, back lots, offices, and all the infrastructure needed to support a large workforce. In other words, a new and growing construction and real estate asset class is emerging with pension funds and private equity really keen to invest. So Samantha, please tell me more about your role at the British Film Commission and how you're helping to bring together real estate developers, investors, and content producers to deliver new studio space in the UK. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of context first about the British Film Commission. Um, the BFC is a public private partnership predominantly funded by government, by the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport through the BFI and by the Department for International Trade. And we have some corporate sponsorship as well from US and UK stakeholders, including Disney, Warner Brothers, HBO, Working Title, Pinewood Studios, Netflix and several other um, notable organisations. Our role is to maximise and support inward investment through film and TV production in the UK. And in our context, inward investment is basically defined as uh, internationally financed or co-financed film and high-end TV production. Um, in short, that's the big budget feature films and scripted episodic dramas and TV dramas um, that, that many of us see on our TVs. And our major production clients are our US studios, such as Disney, Warners, Paramount, Universal, Sony, and the big TV companies and streamers like HBO, Netflix, Apple, Amazon. We're also responsible for promoting and supporting UK infrastructure, UK wide, including studios, visual effects, post, crew, and all the all other organizations that make up the film and TV production industry across. Um, Northern Ireland, England, Scotland and Wales. And importantly, and relevant to this area in particular, um, we're also responsible for liaising between government and the film and TV industry to establish and maintain what we call production friendly policies. And that's anything from the UK's tax reliefs, for film and TV production, to our working safely during COVID guidance, immigration policy as it pertains to the film and TV industry and specifically to this area, our um, government funded stage space support and development initiative. And obviously to focus on that area specifically for this conversation, um, you need a bit of background on why government feels it's it's necessary, necessary and positive to invest in this area. So in short, the film and TV industry industry generates billions of pounds for the UK economy annually. Um, and in tandem with that, it creates hundreds of thousands of jobs and generates work for countless infrastructure facilities through the UK. Um, we've literally just released statistics for UK spend for 2021. Um, and the full year spend for film and high-end TV production in the UK was 5.64 billion. 84% of that was accounted for by inward investment by those international film and TV shows, the, the big films and TV shows. I think the other thing that's important to recognise is um, understanding the government's levelling up agenda. This is not an industry that is limited to London and the southeast of England. Much of the spend, particularly the TV dramas and streaming projects, are based across the UK's nations and regions. We have seven production hubs in the UK. 
um, unsurprisingly, the largest of which is in London and the southeast. But we have additional major production hubs, um, and that's defined as um, a crew base, an indigenous crew base with a studio and additional infrastructure. So we have six additional hubs. We have one in South Wales. Um, Cardiff is the heart of it, but there's also um, spreads out into Newport and to Swansea to a, to a lesser degree, but also Scotland's central belt, so Glasgow and Edinburgh, Belfast in Northern Ireland. And then in England, we've got obviously London, the southeast, but also the southwest. Um, Bristol is, is the heart of that production hub. The northwest of England with the, the biggest crew bases in Manchester and Liverpool. And then Yorkshire um, has its own crew base and its own infrastructure. So obviously ticks a lot of boxes um, in that regard because it's a, a truly UK wide um, industry. And we know that the demand is for content is is far greater than what the UK can currently accommodate. And that's due to, to lack of studio space capacity and skills capacity. So to address this market failure um, and, and to capitalize on the opportunity, um, government um, invested 4.8 million pounds of, of treasury investment over three years to expand the British Film Commission's work in promoting the UK as a destination of choice for studio space investment and development. So whilst we're never going to be investing in bricks and mortar, we're a public company and anything we could invest would be in, you know, a drop in the ocean in, in that regard. But we're here to provide support for potential investors, developers, studio operators, um, both in, in new builds, expansions, alternative build space and conversions. We can also assess the feasibility of existing infrastructure, sites and land for potential studio stage and alternative build space opportunities throughout the UK, um, insisting, uh, assisting in, in delivery of projects that meet relevant criteria for our industry. And we provide access to bespoke research and analysis on the latest approaches to new infrastructure development. Uh, we cover areas like integration of renewable technologies, sustainability, um, as well as providing uh, demand data and research on crew bases, business rates and planning. We have created um, a bespoke supplier framework offering access to UK wide based companies with a, a range of expertise relevant to stage space support and development across multiple disciplines, including architecture and design, acoustics, structural and building surveying, construction, planning advice, um, environmental and sustainability advisors, which is, is crucial, obviously. Um, and that's a, a pre-procured service, so we can work at, at a commercial pace rather than at a, at a publicly funded pace, which is obviously very important for our clients. We can also advise, advise on preliminary design and specifications um, and help with national and local authority, regulatory frameworks, planning, etc. cetera. Um, crucially, at a high level, we work very closely with government. As I've said, we're, we're funded by DCMS and DIT. So with DCMS, they can help work with us on any legislative barriers to development, including planning and um, business rates, for example. And with DIT, we work very closely on what's referred to as foreign direct investments or FDI, and that uh, relates to studio and stage space development financed out of um, outside of the UK. And um, for example, uh, our relationship with Blackstone and Hudson Pacific came via that relationship. So that's a, a crucial relationship between the BFC and government. Um, so for this, which is relatively a, a, still a tiny asset class, um, due to the transient nature of, of the business, as, as Marianne, you, you talked about at, at the beginning of our conversation, um, it, it really is only now becoming um, into, the, into the wider consciousness, certainly of um, our real estate colleagues, as you say, traditionally, there was just a matter of months where um, a project was based at a studio, but because of the demand, we are now seeing those longer leases and very unusually for our industry, again, as you pointed out, um, actual investments for many, many years, Warner Brothers was the only studio that had um, actual bricks and mortar in the UK with Warner Brothers Studios Leavesden. But as as you've rightly said, we've now seen um, Comcast invest by Sky Studios Elstree, and then we have um, countless long term leases at, at the likes of Pinewood, Shepparton, and um, others other of our big studios. So it's uh, it's been a rapidly evolving picture. 
Yeah, and I, I can tell from your answer, it's, you know, it's a sector which is really interesting, it's growing quickly and it's changing all the time. Um, but, but it's not a sector where I see many women actually in senior positions. So I'd like to ask you with International Women's Day approaching, can you tell us about how the industry is promoting inclusion and gender representation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I'll talk about the production industry more widely rather than just the stage space. So there, there's stuff to talk about there as well. So whilst like many industries, sadly, there are, there are undoubtedly certainly um, significant gender imbalances in certain areas. For example, there's been quite a lot of um, publicity around the lack of female directors. Um, but the film and TV industry does benefit benefit from a number of real powerhouse women in senior business and creative roles. So we have a lot of studio heads um, who are women, um, and a lot of British and international showrunners and uh, and other key creatives and business leads. Just to to pick a few examples um, in the international field, obviously you've got people like a Ava DuVernay and um, Shonda Rhimes who are really leading the way in in female led production and doing really really well, um, you know, both commercially and culturally. But in the UK, we have names like Jane Transfer and Julie Gardner who run Bad Wolf, um, who are incredibly successful. they uh, one of their flagships is uh, the BBC HBO series His Dark Materials. Um, but then you've got names like Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Michaela Cole, who are really um, leaving leaving a mark. And these incredible women use their influence to ensure better rep uh, gender representation on their pr productions, and that creates a legacy for for the next generation of film and TV. And we also benefit enormously from some really brilliant women um, in industry roles as well. So we have um, Emily Stillman, for example, who heads up. One of other studios, Leavesden, which is one of the UK's biggest studios. Uh, she came through from production as a production manager, and she now heads up that studio. We've got Lindsay Duffy, who is the um, CEO of the Production Guild of Great Britain. So they have um, a real influence on the industry. And then our industry is predominantly freelance. We have countless brilliant freelance producers. Um, who are who are running some of the biggest film and TV shows made anywhere in the world? We've got Sarah Bradshaw, Joe Byrne, Marianne Jenkins, Suzanne Reed. I can go on and on, um, and that doesn't even touch on what we call the below the line crew talent, which is your heads of department, like um, you know designers and um, and camera people. But talking of camera operators, for example, there are certain traditionally male roles um, and departments that will probably take a whole generation, if not longer, to, to evolve. Um, but we are really lucky to have bespoke initiatives and organisations in the UK whose job is to help skill our industry for the future. And all of those initiatives have a significant focus on diversity and inclusion, and that in includes gender inclusion. Um, and we're also very lucky that a lot of our clients and the BFC clients, as I've said, are predominantly those big US companies. Taking Netflix as an example, um, I read a report of theirs recently um, that that shared that that fifty percent of their uh, senior workforce is made up of um, of women. So that's you know, very very positive to hear. Yeah, so, so it sounds like there's some really good role models there, uh, which, which is which is wonderful to hear. Um, in contrast, sometimes the construction and real estate development industry doesn't always have the best image around gender diversity. And sometimes large schemes can also be controversial around planning, for example. But it seems to me that these, you know, large studio development schemes are often, in fact, a really great way of regenerating a brownfield site, creating jobs, not just in construction, but also production. Um, and in my blog about a year ago with Martina Kitts of NTT, Martina mentioned how their data center development at Dagenham is actually next door to a new film studio development project, you know, showing the potential for brownfield site regeneration in this way. And I wondered if you had any more examples of that kind of thing in action. Yeah, we we do, and you're you're exactly right. Um, so there are countless economic and social benefits of of um, studio development, um, and the project you were talking about, um, embarking in Dagenham. 
um, is uh, is up and running now. One one of the two studios being built there is um, the Wharf, which is opening as we speak, and um, there's going to be some very uh, exciting developments announced soon there. And that's one area where economic regeneration is is you know very much an important requirement. And the council have been very supportive, working in partnership very closely with Hackman MBS. Um, who operate that studio, and that's just one of many um, examples. So, I think the first thing that that um, your viewers and your clients need to understand about um, studios and film production is, and I've been had many many people approach me to say we've we've got a plot of land or we've got a big studio, uh, sorry, a, a big conversion ready development, um, but it's not a case of if you build it, they will come. I talked earlier about the seven production hubs and the key component of those hubs besides the studios themselves is access to appropriately sized and experienced crew base. Um, you can build studios in a matter of months with the right financing and support, but building a world class crew base to service the kind of productions the BFC supports takes years. So um, that's that's one of the, the key criteria. The BFC ourselves, we work to ensure that um, development partners can identify and address current and future skills gaps. So we work with delivery partners in the UK's regions and nations to undertake focused and strategic interventions to address skills gaps, ensuring a pipeline of, of crew with appropriate skills um, to service the productions based at the studios that we support. Um, and through these channels, we've been able to support step across schemes with uh, skills transference from other industries into our industry and stepping up schemes um, in Scotland, Wales, and then we have some national UK wide initiatives, initiatives as well through um, the Production Guild of Great Britain, for example, where we've been able to support the training of COVID supervisors, line producers, production coordinators, and, and other key roles, as well as specific diversity and inclusion mentorship, uh, of which we're incredibly proud. And the reason I'm talking about this is all new studio develop developments are supporting um, significant skills focus as part of their development and plans. Um, and a key part of BFC support is continuing to work with those developments throughout the planning and development phase to help make appropriate introductions to UK wide partners to um, ensure that the benefit they are bringing to the local area is um, is partly um, economically led, but also skills led. Um, and it will lead to obviously a, a huge knock on benefit of local employment. But the, the benefits go beyond employment and skills investment. For example, um, BFI and Allsburg's recently released Screen Business Report found that the proportion of production costs for film and TV spent in the general economy was actually between 40% and 60% of the total production spend. So importantly, significant amounts of that, uh, depending on the size of production, were spent in sectors which have been particularly affected by COVID too. So um, areas like transport and travel, hospitality and catering. So the multiplier impact of production is, is pretty significant. Um, but then you'll also see other kind of softer knock-on um, impacts like tourism. Um, Pinewood obviously recently announced their um, visitor attraction, um, but, but many of the developments include um, outreach to education, school visits, and um, film production training, film craft, adult education, employment reskilling, community outreach. And then um, there are, uh, for example, with the Pinewood project, they're doing startup incubators, uh, service and accommodation, advice and mentoring, um, and a business growth hub. So really, the, the benefits to a local area are um, quite considerable, as well as the obvious benefits to the national economy by just bringing this inward investment into the UK. So, so it's an incredibly wide community benefit by the sound of it. Um, and you know, I, I could frankly talk to you about this all day to Samantha, but we've run out of time um, for now. So thank you very much, Samantha, for allowing me to interview you and for your interesting and thought-provoking answers. And thanks to everybody for watching. If you're keen to know more about construction, you might want to take a look at our construction blogs and blogs. You can either go to cliffordchance.com slash construction or follow the Clifford Chance Global Real Estate LinkedIn page.
thanks again for watching.